Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. A good dawn in Brazil. And to those throughout this world, may God bless you today. I would like to share with you a word which God has touched me with, touched in my interior, in our being, our soul, our spirit, which certainly is going to bring to you the understanding of His will for you who are watching me now. You who are perhaps experiencing depression, anxiety, nervousness, a desire to die. You have no desire to live anymore because inside of you there is an evil. There is something evil. And that's why this evil thing, this evil spirit incites you to die, to kill yourself because it wants your soul to go to hell. That's the reality. So pay attention to what God speaks to you, to me, to all of us. This is a warning He gives to all of us. He says like this, Jesus said, Jesus said before dying and resurrecting and going to the Father, He said, and I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper. Jesus had been the helper of His disciples until those days, until that moment. He had been their helper. But then he said, I will pray the Father and he will give you. So Jesus guarantees that God will give us another helper that he may abide with you forever. We know that as long as Jesus was with his disciples, they would feel secure. But when Jesus would go to pray by himself, then they would be insecure, doubtful, afraid. So Jesus was telling them here, I'm going to pray the Father and He will give you another helper. Another helper that He may abide with you forever. Forever. Throughout your entire life here on earth. And He speaks of the helper saying, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive which means that those who are God's children receive Him. Those who are not, they won't receive. The world cannot receive Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. How wonderful. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you, inside of you. And it's interesting that Jesus says like this, the Spirit of Truth, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive. The world cannot receive because it neither sees Him or knows Him. And, and the world only believes in what it sees, isn't it? It has to see in order to believe. Isn't it what they say? The world is like this. The natural world, natural people, people who live by a natural faith, they have this understanding, I need to see in order to believe. Let me go there and see it so I believe. If they don't touch and see, like Thomas, oh, if I don't touch his hand and see, then I won't believe it. 
So the thomases of life exist up until today. They are alive today. So they can't see Jesus, or better, they cannot see the Holy Spirit, neither know Him, because they need, they depend on a supernatural faith in order to see Him. And you cannot see Him with a natural faith. You cannot know God with a natural faith. With a natural faith, you cannot have the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit. So, he says, the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him or knows Him. But you, speaking to His disciples, His followers, those who obeyed His word, you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. Well, this is what we are trying to pass on to people, that we want you, dear friend, to know the Holy Spirit so that He can be in you and then you will have guidance and direction according to your needs. So when a person receives the Holy Spirit, then they know the Lord Jesus, they know the Father, because the Holy Spirit Himself reveals the Father to them. He reveals Jesus to them. So they are convinced of something that not even death is capable of removing from inside of them. So the problems, the hardships, the battles, are foolish, are insignificant, because in reality, when the person has the Holy Spirit, they are able to go beyond the obstacles. They go through tribulations and they overcome. They remain strong because the Spirit of Jesus, the same Spirit that guided Jesus, is guiding them. So Jesus overcame everything. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was in Him. And when we have the Holy Spirit, we also overcome everything. We are always overcoming, even if it looks like we are losing, but we are not. Never, ever, in no time, because the Spirit of God guides us. He said, you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. And that's what we are trying to pass on to you. <laughs> have you imagined that, my friend? Especially you who have done so many wrong things in life. You've made so many wrong choices. And of course you suffered because of them and you are there with your life as crumbs, eating the crumbs of life. Have you thought of you having the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Jesus inside of you? So you are going to be the most powerful person on earth, the wealthiest person on earth, because you will be guided by the Holy Spirit, by God Himself inside of you. That's why Jesus continues to say, I will not leave you orphans or abandoned. I will come to you a little while longer and the world will see me no more. So the world was seeing Jesus. It condemned him, arrested him, condemned him, killed him, nailed him to the cross. Everybody saw that. But when Jesus resurrected, that was it. On the third day when He resurrected, the world didn't see Him anymore and it still doesn't see Him. However, however, you, those who follow Him, those who have the Holy Spirit, you will see Me because I live, you will live also. Look how nice. This is the message. This is the essence of the message that 
the universal church of the kingdom of God, has been trying to pass on to people. Those people who, people who are proud, arrogant, people who are puffed up, who think this, they think that, and they do not want to incline before the Word of God, then these people will continue blind. They will never have an encounter with God. But those who say, I do not know you, my Father, but I know that you exist and I would like to know you. I want to know you. God doesn't want you to just know Him. He wants you to be His child, that you have a relationship, an intimate relationship with Him at any time of the day or night, anywhere, in any situation. He is with you in any situation, in any place. He will be with you. Of course, first you have to have Him. And in order for you to have Him, you have to sacrifice the world, your desires, your lusts, your personal dreams. You have to live your life on the altar, die for the world. That's the reality. By the way, water baptism, the baptism means burial. The water baptism is a burial. Like it was done to the body of Jesus, He was buried. So we also have to be buried. So that then the Holy Spirit will be able to come and give us a new life. And the person is able then to be born again, to be born of the Spirit and to live in Spirit and to remain in Spirit until the day that our Lord comes to get us which is very near, very near. So, my friends, understand this. When we speak about receiving the Holy Spirit or being a new person or becoming a child of God, it's all the same thing. It's about the Holy Spirit, receiving the Holy Spirit. You have seen testimonies of people who received the Holy Spirit and their life was completely transformed. And this transformation is started inside of them. It started in here, inside, in the heart, in the mind, in their thoughts. And then it was exteriorized, showing it to everybody else that they had a new life. So those who see you you who have the Holy Spirit, of course, they are seeing God in you. And that's what it means to sanctify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. It's when you have the image of God reflected in your life for the whole world to see, for the world to see that God exists through you. Do you understand, my friend? There was a time that someone asked Jesus, Lord, show us the Father. Philip asked, Lord, show us the Father. And then Jesus said, Philip, come on. How long have I been with you and you still haven't seen the Father? Whoever sees me sees the Father. And that's true. Whoever sees the Son sees the Father. But the Son is only seen if indeed He is a Son. If He is not a Son, then He won't be seen. The Father won't be seeing Him. So God wants to be seen through you, my friend. I know that this is impossible for the natural world, but for the world of the supernatural faith, for this supernatural faith, the world that is above everything else from this earthly world that is completely con contrary to this world, the kingdom of God, then the person has the obligation to exude the fragrance of Jesus. 
they have the obligation to carry the image of the Lord Jesus. And whoever sees that person will see God. Will see God in them, in their character, in their way of being a, a person that is truthful, honest, a person of integrity, a person who is incorruptible, someone who is of the truth. They have the spirit of truth. Say, don't, don't lie. So, my dear friend, may this text be chewed and then digested so that then you may put it into practice in your life and make your being, your body, your life a new one. I will read the text again. Pay attention. And I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. It's not like an entity that goes up and down in a witchcraft temple. No, when the Holy Spirit comes, He stays and stays and stays until we die. The Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive because the world wants personal satisfaction. It wants to conquer the things of this world. That's the reality. But those who receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, they take possession of the Kingdom of God. They take possession of the Kingdom of God. So he says, the Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him. For he dwells with you, he dwells with you and will be in you. Look at that. You may say like this, Bishop, or perhaps you have already thought like that. Wow, Bishop passes on so much peace to us. He passes something different to us. It's not me, it's the Spirit that is in me. It is God, it is my Lord that is inside of me the Lord Jesus in spirit inside of me. But He does not want to just be with me. He wants to be with you. He wants to enter you. He wants to dwell in you, to make His dwelling place in you. He wants to turn your body into His dwelling place, His temple. And then He says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will come to you, and we are waiting for him to come. He didn't leave us orphans because his spirit is here with us. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. That's it. The world didn't see him anymore. But you will see me. You will see me. You can see God in me, in my family, in my house. You can see God in my marriage, in my behavior, and so on. You, you can see God, but you will see me, which means you will see God through your life. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will see God, you will feel, you notice God, not only you, but people around you as well. Then he says, because I live, you will live also. So, those who receive the Holy Spirit are indeed children of God. And then there is nothing else to conquer because they already conquered everything, everything, the most glorious, powerful, the richest thing a human being can have on earth. May the Holy Spirit enlighten your understanding May the Holy Spirit open your understanding to comprehend these words, simple words, but powerful. May God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, I'd like to remind you that today in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God, we have the chain of prayer for deliverance. You who are going through 
moments of terror, nervousness, fear, depression, insomnia, anxiety, sadness, and so on. You lost a loved one and you are desperate. You have no more joy. Today is the day to remove the evil, the evil, the evil spirit that has caused your life to be bitter. Your life has been bitter because there is a bitter spirit inside of you. Come today to receive deliverance in any universal church of the kingdom of God. And on Sunday, come to receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.